It's always a special treat to hear from one of our graduating students. And today we have the opportunity to hear from Timothy Allen Norton. Tim was born and raised in a little town called, yes, Niceville, Florida. <laughs> Tim, I just hope you didn't mess up the name of that town. As Tim says, it's the part of Florida that should be in Alabama. Moving to Gordon-Conwell was the first time that he lived outside the Florida Panhandle. He's a graduate of Florida State University where he attended the prestigious musical theater program, received a bachelor's of music in music theater, maintains a deep love for theater and the acting community. Tim's call to ministry happened slowly at first, with a last minute decision that sent him kicking and screaming away from professional performance into full-time ministry. It was, as he says, one of the hardest choices I've ever made, and I'm so glad the Lord led me into ministry. I believe it's what God wired me to do. Tim's parents, Wanda and Mike Dye, and Beth and Clark Norton, and his brother Tim are here today. Where are you? Wave your hands so we can say hello, thank you, right down here. So glad to have you on this significant day. And so let us give our attention at this time to Tim Norton. Y'all are a good looking bunch of people, man. Well, good morning, uh, my name is Tim. It is an honor and privilege to be up here and speak to and with my peers. And so I'd like to thank the uh, faculty and administration for uh, allowing me to have this opportunity, for my peers, for putting up with me for four years. You've been through a lot, yeah. Uh, for the friends and family that are here supporting these graduates and for our Lord who brought us here by his grace. As many of you know, Gordon-Conwell is a big idea preaching school. And for those of you that aren't familiar with this concept, that means every sermon that gets preached in preaching class at Gordon-Conwell has to have one idea, one and only one summary statement, a, a thesis, a central theme. And so I knew that as I prepared a commencement address that I had to have one idea or my degree would be burned before I could pick it up by Dr. Gibson. <laughs> but that got me thinking. I mean, how nerdtastic would it be if I could have a big idea for my commencement speech that was also a big idea for ministry preparation, a big idea for Gordon Conwell? And I thought, if I could summarize my four years uh, here in school in one statement, what would I say? If I could boil down Gordon Conwell into one idea, what would it be? And so the hunt began. And at first, I went immediately to our education. This is why many of us chose to come to Gordon Conwell. We wanted a rigorous academic education. We believed that uh, transforming our minds was essential to our ministry in churches, in the classroom, abroad, or even in our homes and workplaces. We believed that knowing God was important because you can't share or introduce a God to someone if you don't know that God very well. You just can't do it. But it probably didn't take many of us very long before we realized that that education process was a lot harder than we thought it was going to be. There were battles involved. I remember a particular battle. I stared at my Hebrew exegesis final, like David facing Goliath, and I, I, I think I heard it whisper some Taylor Swift lyrics to me, darling, I'm a nightmare, dressed like a daydream. <laughs> and of course, I said back, well, I've got some blank spaces for you, and it's the vocab section. So, uh, <laughs> but we battled through our education and maybe your battle was a, a theology class or a cross-cultural church planting or uh, ministering to women in pain all of us here have battled I, I, I know some of us have battled through some serious Netflix binges over reading week can I get an amen <laughs> so my peers and my friends I want you to look back think back over these last few years you are here because you have conquered some battles. You are here because you are graduating. You have successfully made it through the education program.
And there's a room full of people, myself included, that are proud of you. And so as I thought about what a big idea for a commencement speech should be, I thought about this battle through education. So I'm thinking maybe we, we conquered the battle or my books are heavy and my eyes are heavier, but I, I couldn't quite figure it out. And so I wanted to boil it down to something a little more serious, right? We're going to be professional here at our graduation. As a ministry is knowing God, right? That's where we started with this education process. Ministry is being God's people, maybe. But even as I said that, I thought, there's something missing. I mean, yeah, ministry means that we know God. We've trained ourselves in education, but there's something missing from that statement. There's something that, that needs to be about people, about relationships. Gordon Conwell teaches us a lot of information, but it also teaches us how to relate to people. Dr. Gibson, one of my mentors and professors, often says ministry is people. And I know that my roommate, Dave, who's put up with me for four years, has taught me a lot about relationships. And one of the most important things that he taught me is the, the need, the necessity to invest time in a relationship. I remember uh, one particular year we were at Denny's at an ungodly late hour, and we were the only people in that diner working on our uh, end of semester coursework. And all of a sudden, a song came on the radio. And Dave and I were at such a state of low morale that we decided to scream along with the song in Denny's Diner. You can't hurry, love. No, you just have to wait. So anytime now I see Dave, I can sing that to him, and he'll join me re reluctantly. But uh, it seems like a random memory from seminary. But I've got several hundred random memories with Dave. And I've realized that it's those random memories that have birthed our relationship. The, the serious moments, the life-changing moments, the good times, the bad, the tears, the laughter, all of it was produced in mundane moments. And that's because relationships take time. People take time. Knowing God is important, my peers. Knowing doctrine, being educated is very important, but if your education doesn't compel you to spend time with people, to have coffee, to hold hands, to go to games, to, to sit uh, with your people to whom you're ministering, then it's a failed doctrine. And so I think I need to come up with some sort of relational addition to, to this big idea. So I'm, uh, maybe uh, quantity time is the prerequisite for quality time. Philip Long quoted me that one. Or maybe uh, Denny's, uh, bad for the arteries, but good for the soul, something like that. <laughs> but if I were to add the two that we've come up with together, I would have ministry is God's people in relationship. And that sounds pretty good, but there's something missing. There's a little bit of nuance that we need in the relationships because it's not just a normal relationship that we're dealing with. There's something that we need to, to qualify about that relationship. And, and that qualification was taught to me by a man named Jeremy. I remember sitting in a Starbucks with Jeremy, and, and I was telling him about my classes and uh, how everything was, was going well, and I was excited because I was learning how to be a pastor. And by golly, I was going to be a pastor that was better than every other pastor I had ever seen. And I was telling him how I was not going to abuse uh, people like I had seen. I was going to get the Bible better than I had, than I had ever heard taught. And my friend, uh, Jeremy, noticed something, and he decided to show me how faulty my thinking was. He said, yeah, you're right, you're going to do that. You're going to be that pastor. You're going to be better than any pastor you've ever seen. You've been through that experience for a reason. You're going to do that. And you know why? Because God loves you more when you don't fail. And I said, yeah, what? <laughs> and he noticed that in my life, I valued competence more than I valued the Lord. I valued getting it right more than I valued the Lord's grace and relationship. And what happened after that was rather than just giving me the information that I needed to know, Jeremy invited me into his family. And they're sitting right there. And they brought me into their home. They loved me. They spent time with me over and over and over. And they used that time and that relationship to demonstrate, to gift to me the Lord's grace. Thank you.
He also taught me how to grow a beard. And that's a necessary seminary experience. And that's the thing that we need to know as ministers, guys. Ministry is not just being in a relationship with people. It's not just knowing God. Ministry is God's people giving grace through relationships. The gospel is essentially a reconciliation mission. It is a redemption mission. We are surrounded by broken relationships. Broken relationships between us and the Lord. Broken relationships within ourselves, amongst our peers, with society, with creation. And the gospel is God's free redemption and reconciliation through Jesus Christ. And that grace travels along a trajectory from knowledge into relationship. And you've begun that trajectory with your education here at Gordon-Conwell. Don't let the trajectory stop. Don't throw information at brokenness and call it ministry. Because the only way that a broken relationship is healed is with a grace-filled relationship. Ministry is God's people giving God's grace through relationship. And so the time has come. We're here. The time has come for us to leave this school and engage people. You might not know what's next. You might not have decided or you might not have gotten the next step in your, in your uh, life. But this call is a call regardless of circumstance. You might be overwhelmed at the next step that you know you're about to jump into, whether it's the classroom, uh, the workplace, or vocational ministry. This call is the bottom line of your ministry. You might be deciding, hey, I'm not going into vocational ministry. You might be sitting here thinking, I didn't graduate from this school. This call is a call to all God's people. Ministry is God's people giving God's grace through relationship. Be those ministers. Thank you.